Hi, I'm Bill Hood with the School of Screen Printing with a great tip on determining the printability of artwork in the screen printing process. Thin lines often do not reproduce well in the screen printing process. It's important to know what line thickness can be printed and what mesh count will be needed to print a particular line thickness. In this short video, you'll learn how to 1. Choose a mesh count that will produce a given line thickness. 2. Make your lines the correct line thickness for your mesh count. And 3. Increase the line thickness in JPEGs, TIFFs, or other fixed format files. When you're working in one of the popular drawing programs like Adobe Illustrator, you can select a line weight of various thicknesses that corresponds with the mesh with which you'll be printing. But how do you know what line thickness to select? Basically, the smallest line or dot that can be reproduced by the screen printing process is equal to the total width of one mesh opening and two mesh threads. You can find this information in the Mesh Selection Guide, which can be acquired from your mesh manufacturer or screen print supply distributor. For instance, a 11080 mesh, that's 110 threads per linear inch with an 80 micron thread diameter before weaving, made by CFAR, has a mesh opening of 149 microns and a thread diameter of 80 microns for a total of 309 microns. Again, this information is available from your mesh manufacturer. Most drawing programs allow you to select the line width or weight in points. Converting microns to points is an easy process given the following formula. You simply divide the total microns of our one mesh opening and two thread diameters by 352.77 to arrive at the correct point size. In this case, we're using a 11080, which has a minimum printability of 309 microns. We divide 309 microns by 352.77 and arrive at 0.87 points, or roughly one point line weight. This means that if you're creating an illustration that will be printed using a 11080 mesh, you'll not want any of your lines to be less than one point in weight. But what do you do when a client brings in JPEG artwork in which the lines are less than one point in thickness? No problem, with a little bit of knowledge that I'm going to share with you. You can place the JPEG into your drawing program and then place a one point line next to the thin lines to quite easily compare the line weight. If the lines in your JPEG artwork are too thin, you're going to have to increase the weight. Although this is an easy solution for making lines thicker, it does decrease the resolution slightly if you go too far. So we have to be careful. You know what they say, too much of a good thing can be bad for you. The first thing you want to do is open a copy of the illustration in Adobe Photoshop as we've already done here. Now you should never work on the original file but always duplicate the file and name it differently so that you still have the original file to revert back to if something goes horribly wrong. Now, as you can see here, some of the lines in this illustration are very thin and obviously less than our one point minimum for our 11080 mesh count selection. This is going to make the lines very difficult to expose and reproduce in our screen, let alone print onto our substrate. Redrawing the thin lines by hand is certainly an option, but this is very slow and tedious. What I'm going to show you is a quick and easy way to do this in Photoshop. Let's start with a cat in this illustration, which has very thin lines and will be problematic to print. Next, we select the polygonal lasso tool from the toolbox, right there. And what we want to do is we want to draw around this cat to isolate the cat from the rest of the drawing. Uh, the other lines are, are thick enough. We don't have to worry about them, the ones that are immediately around the cat. There may be other lines in this illustration, as you'll see in a moment. But for right now, we're just going to isolate the cat so that we don't increase the line resolution of the lines, the other lines in here that are already thick enough. Okay? So we'll go all the way around the cat with our lasso tool until we get back to the starting point, and there we go. Now, the next step is to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. This brings up our Levels box. If you'll take the black slider that's on the left of this box and you move it to the right, you'll see that the cat, the lines of the cat, are going to increase, and they're going to get darker and darker as we move the slider over. Now, if you go too far, you're going to bitmap it a little bit too much. We don't want to go too far. We want to back off a little bit. Like, like so. And then just so you can see the difference, I'm going to select the preview button on and off. This is the way it is now. This is the way it was before. Then we say OK and 
the lines are much thicker. You can do a Command D to deselect it at this point, or you could go to Select, Deselect. If there are other, if there are other places that need to be increased, uh, you can go and find them, and you can uh, actually increase them. Now, you don't have to use a polygonal lasso tool. If you have an area that w works with it, you can use the rectangular tool. Again, you go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, bring your level box up, and as you can see, when we move this over, the lines around the eye there, the dots, they get much thicker. Again, I'm going to preview on and off so you can see the difference. And that's all there is to it. If there are other areas that are problematic, you can work on that area in much the same way as we increase the thickness of the lines on the cat I, and the horse. I hope this explains the process and that you have great success in your endeavors. Thank you for watching. I'm Bill Hood for the School of Screen Printing. May all your impressions be great.